Hey guys, it's me Astrid and today let's talk about science. So something that's come to my attention recently is an article entitled Millions of GMO Mosquitoes to be Released in Florida. And I'm afraid that most people are going to just read this title, freak the fuck out, and go try to protest this, which is ridiculous. There was a test done by NPR uh, last year, I think, with an article, something titled like, Americans don't read very much. And if you had gone and clicked through the article and read the article, you would see it was just a joke and it was testing whether people would actually read the article. And you were the smart one. And if you just wrote a, went through the comments, you could see hundreds of people writing angry replies about how Americans are not actually that uh, the illiterate, we read books, blah, blah, blah. And it was the people who didn't actually read the article making that comment, which was ironic. But it just goes to show you that people do not read articles or gain understanding before they make opinions and start being mad about stuff. So the word GMO and being released into the wild is very scary for some people. Now, the, th the thing about this is, is that if we the purpose of these genetically modified mosquitoes is to eliminate diseases in the population, um, including malaria, dengue fever, and chikungunya. I think the latter two have no vaccination and no cure, and all three have been ravaging human population for a long time. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I read this around, but I don't think I've ever verified it through journals or anything, but if I'm not mistaken, mosquitoes have been the number one killer of humans throughout history mosquitoes because of the diseases they carry even if that's not true you can still see that they cause really awful damage to human populations affected by them so these mosquitoes are designed to remedy that um, basically what they're doing is they're genetically modifying a male mosquito male mosquitoes don't even bite you so you don't have to worry about it biting you um, they, the male mosquito is basically unaffected. He mates with a female mosquito, and then the gene from the male mosquito turns on, and it kills the offspring. So what happens is the mosquito population is reduced 95% or so in a few runs of releasing these male mosquitoes, and in turn, the diseases that mosquitoes carry are not as easily spread to humans because there's fewer mosquitoes to do the spreading. Fewer humans are infected with these horrible diseases, and so their population gets healthier. It's better for the society. In turn, fewer mosquitoes get the diseases, and eventually this cycle continues until the diseases are eliminated, which is awesome. And the best part is, if you're worried about mosquitoes, the mosquito population is allowed to return to normal once the diseases are out of circulation so to say. So these diseases get taken out of circulation through the minimization of mosquito population because of the genetically modified males, and then people don't have ridiculous amounts of sickness, suffering, and death to deal with because of mosquitoes. It's amazing. And the people who are saying, I don't want to be someone's guinea pig, um, well, first off, they've done successful trials of this in Brazil and I think a couple other countries, and the, it, it's been an, a wonderful success. It's been really great. Um, there's a Radio Lab episode I'll include below if you want to listen to it discussing this. If nothing else, it's really interesting, kind of entertaining. I love Radio Lab. So you can listen to it down there. Um, and, you know, we have had other successful cases of modifying insects to reduce or eliminate their population for the benefit of mankind and for animals. Um, it's not some untested thing. It's not some thing that's completely dangerous or going to hurt us. It's only going to help us. And these genetically modified mosquitoes are going to be wonderful. And before you, well, let, let me, let me read you an excerpt. This is a different, this is a different, um, case. Um, this eliminated an insect population to the benefit of many animals. Um, just as a warning, this is going to be graphic, so maybe you want to skip ahead 30 seconds. I'll try to put right here where the next time you can skip ahead to if you think, if you're squeamish. But I'll read this to you. This is the book Animals in Translation by Temple Grandin. 
She is an, a woman with autism who revolutionized um, slaughterhouses and made them more humane, efficient, and, and, and safe um, for, for animals and the people working there. She's really wonderful. You may think, oh, slaughterhouses, but just, just give her a try. She's really, really amazing. But here's what she wrote. Um, this is, uh, I'm just going to read. So it says, things were different in the 1960s when I was visiting my aunt's ranch in Arizona. At the time, livestock were being attacked by screw worms all over the West, Southwest, and Mexico. Screw worms are the larvae of a fly that lays its eggs in open wounds. If you're squeamish, tune out now. These wounds can be from anything, a cut, bite, or a new, even a newborn's navel. Screw worms can attack humans too and like to lay eggs inside the nostril. When the eggs hatch, the maggots come out and eat the animal alive. Other maggots eat dead flesh, but screw worm maggots eat live flesh and they're deadly. Um, up until the USDA got involved, my aunt had been digging the maggots out of wounds on her horses by hand. She would pick each maggot out with tweezers, drop it on the ground, and squash and stomp it. She'd blob screw worm paste all over the wound to fill it up so no flies could get back in and lay more eggs. If you did not do this, the horse would die. A screw worm infestation was a hideous and horrible thing. The USDA field workers figured out how to get rid of the screw worms by taking advantage of a quirk in their reproductive system. Does this sound familiar? The screw worm's developmental sequence goes from egg to maggot to pupa to fly, and the USDA bred a bunch of screw worms and irradiated the males when they reached the pupa stage, making them sterile. So this is different. This is irradiation, um, whereas the mosquitoes have been genetically modified. But I imagine, you know, many years ago, right after we dropped our first nuclear weapons, um, people would be freaked out about radiation too because it seems scary, but in actuality it's not and it's not going to hurt us. Hurt us. You'd say, we don't want uh, little radioactive glowing flies flying around us. Well, it's not the case. What the case is is that they're eliminating the disease, but I'll continue to read. All right. They took these irradiated pupae out in little paper boxes and dropped the boxes out of airplanes. The flies would come out of the boxes and mate with lots of females, and the females that they'd mated with laid eggs that did not hatch. The program was a huge success. It started in 1959, the United States working with Mexico, and the last case of screw worm infestation was recorded in Texas in 1982. Today there are no screw worms anywhere in the U.S. or Mexico. I remember those years well. You'd find little boxes all over the ranch, seven or eight of them this summer. The box would say USDA and there would be a little story printed on the side explaining what it was and that it wasn't going to hurt you. This was the original biotechnology and it worked. There are other cases of us tweaking with insects or messing with insects reproduction to eliminate horrible, horrible consequences caused by or spread by the insects. So before you go knocking on genetically modified insects, before you go feeling like a guinea pig, know that things like this have been done before and done with great, great success. Great success. Great success. Um, so yeah, additionally, you may say we don't have malaria, chikungunya, or dengue fever in the U.S. Well, we do get a few, I think a few thousand cases of malaria every year. Check with the CDC I just did. Um, and, and they're usually from countries people go to and bring malaria back, but we don't have it in our mosquito population, so it's not a problem for us. However, a few years ago, we had West Nile virus as a scare. People were getting sick with West Nile virus because of the mosquitoes. So if we use this technology, we'll be able to eliminate diseases from mosquitoes. And unlike the screw worms where the population was eliminated, the mosquitoes are going to be decimated and then allowed to return to their normal numbers without the disease in circulation. It's a beautiful, beautiful technology, and I really hope that people give it a chance, learn about it before we reject it, because it's really, it's really a wonderful thing. Um, I'm really excited about it, and I really hope they do trials in Florida. I hope people don't go sign stupidchange.org petitions without understanding any of the science behind it, but you know how people work. Mm. If you think this is bad, you're wrong, um, but thanks for watching. <laughs>
And um, yeah, I hope I've explained this issue to you. And if you want more explanation, Google it online, listen to the Radio Lab episode. It's really great. And yeah, thanks for watching. Bye guys.